Excellent. <laughs> All right, I'm good. Well, hello, everyone. I'm going to start uh, pretty on time because I love starting on time and finishing and uh, in this super busy time in our practitioner lives, um, making sure that we keep everyone's time uh, holding hold it precious. Um, hello and welcome to this session. Just to confirm that you're in the right session, this is designing assessments using the sustainable development goals. It's, well, this is one of my favorite topics to talk about. I love talking about a lot of things to do with open educational resources, open practice, uh, but I love the tie-in with the sustainable development goals. Um, I don't know, do we have a moderator? Are you supposed to introduce? Sorry about that, Alan. I didn't follow protocol perhaps. Oh, actually, uh, you're stuck with me, so uh, you, you get to do everything and, and run the show. <laughs> All right, well, I'll, I'll do that then. Thanks very much, Alan, for your support. So Alan's here for us for technology support and philosophical support, which is great. Um, so for those of you whom I haven't met before, my name is Jenny Heyman. I am chair of teaching and learning at a small northern college in northern Ontario called Cambrian College. Uh, and have been active in the GoGN network. Uh, I got my doctor of education in 2018. So have been involved in open education um, through my master's work at Athabasca University uh, and through work uh, for the past 10 years or so, which has flown by, uh, but it has been such an interesting time in my life in terms of networking and learning so much from global colleagues. Um, again, our topic today is the sustainable development goals. And, um, and it's a workshop. So we have uh, almost two hours, which is a really great, generous time to, to run a workshop. So um, I'll start my presentation uh, and I encourage all of you to introduce each other. I'm just gonna paste the presentation link again for you because uh, there's a lot of links within the presentation that might be useful as part of the workshop uh, as we go along. So let me share my screen and see how I do. Right, and we'll begin at the beginning. Yeah, I see lots of you piling in there. Uh, this is one of the things that I love about Google Docs uh, for me because I work in the open, um, not necessarily for students because I don't want them to have to use Google Docs and share all of their stuff with Google. Um, and I'm just gonna set up, I wanna make sure that I can see the chat as we go. And the participants list. Uh, and I'm okay. Uh, I don't know, Alan, if we have the controls to allow people to mute, unmute themselves, but I'm okay if folks have questions, if they choose to unmute themselves. Is that going to contravene all the rules and blow it up? No, we have no rules here. We get to make Excellent. it up, but uh, everybody is welcome. They can, we just disable them on entry and then allow right. people to turn yeah. them on. Okay, super. So yeah, the usual rules, if you're, if you're not speaking, if you can mute yourself, just in case your dog is barking, which mine is likely to as any, um, those kinds of things, that would be amazing. But if you have questions, please feel free to, to check in with me because I don't want to, I don't want to go too fast and I don't want to miss some key details. So um, there's lots to talk about with designing learner assessments using the sustainable development goals. And if they're new to you, I'm gonna try and span the spectrum of, of these being new to you and uh, or not. Um, so this is a picture of the goals. There are 17 goals, including the this number 17, which is partnerships for the goals. Um, but I do consider that concept and that kind of ethos in the sustainable development goals as, as just as important as any of the other ones. So feel free to use that number 17 for a variety of reasons you might want to. You could interpret it as interdisciplinarity if you wanted to. Um, so our agenda today is welcome and who's here. I would, I encourage you to introduce yourself in the chat, um, say where you are in the world and what you teach if you teach um, what subjects, what topics, um, and many of us are teachers in all kinds of ways, you know, for our, for our children, for our community members, uh, for our families. I happen to be the tech support for, <laughs> for most of my family. Um, we're going to talk a bit about these sustainable development goals, what they are, and then we're going to talk about the workshop side of things. Um, and generally speaking, 
Um, I hope to come back together uh, around 10 minutes of 5, 4.50 p.m. my time, whatever time that would be for you, close to the end of our workshop um, to find out what folks are learning, what they're building, uh, and so on. So what, what are the sustainable development goals? Um, there are 17 of them, as you saw kind of in the opening um, image. Uh, there are 169 targets related to those 17 goals. So that's a whole lot of targets. Um, these were established by the United Nations in 2015, and they are a replacement, these sustainable development goals for the millennial goals that, that had been established in the year 2000. Um, and so it's a refresh of the types of issues that are being faced by most, uh, by all nations in the world. I wouldn't even say most. Um, they often are talked about uh, as being uh, for economically emerging nations, but they really apply as we'll see by checking them out a little bit to, to anyone's um, context. They focus on human rights as the United Nations always does. Uh, and many of the goals have a particular focus on things like gender equality, the empowerment of women, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, so we'll take a look at them together. The goals are integrated. They are meant to function um, with and among each other as part of what nations are doing to better the lives of the people who live in the nations. Uh, and again, this balances economic, social, and environmental concerns. And the environmental concerns has been a really great and amazing emerging voice um, in the past couple of years. Uh, and I'm really excited about um, some of the awareness and work that has been happening around diversity, equity, and inclusion as well. So here's an example of one of the goals. And again, there are 17 of them, and I'm gonna encourage you, if you're, if you're taking a look at my presentation, there's all kinds of links in it. Um, and those links refer back to the sustainable development goals as articulated by the United Nations in a lot of ways. Uh, I also wanna be clear that there is, there's lots of good and positive and meaningful criticism of the sustainable development goals. So I don't mean to promote them as the be all end all of how we articulate global problems. Um, probably these goals uh, are, you know, are very Eurocentric in some ways. Um, so they're great and as I say, good criticism. So feel free to criticize the goals. Uh, as well as anything else that happens in this particular workshop. So when I take a look at uh, goal number two, which is zero hunger, um, on, the, on the UN website, when you look at any one of the goals, you can typically click on it and flip it around, and the goals have targets and indicators. The targets are what nations might focus on in order to achieve the goal, and the indicators are how they might measure whether or not they're achieving the goal. So the targets are something that really interests me because when I look at these targets, for example, um, I'm, what I see as, a, as an edu educator are learning outcomes <laughs> for any course that I might offer, which is really kind of fun way to interpret them and how I'm using them in the context of creating assessments. Um, so for example, even in 2.1 for zero hunger, if I were to take a look at um, end hunger and ensure access by all people, in particular the poor and people in vulnerable situations, including infants, to safe, nutritious, and sufficient food all year round. This speaks to what we call food insecurity. Um, and especially again, you know, the typical focus for this is for emerging nations, but I, economic nations, but I can tell you this, um, here in Canada, this is a huge problem. Uh, this is a huge problem on my campus. We have students who are attending post-secondary who do not have good access to safe, nutritious, and sufficient food. And therefore, for example, we have um, a food bank on my campus. So this is not just a global issue. It is a local issue, and it's directly affecting the students that I work with. Um, and you can do this with any one of these targets and indicators, start to think, how does this impact my community? How does it impact my school? How does it impact my students, even my own family? Um, and what can I do related to my curriculum to talk about this? Uh, so if I'm teaching a course in health and nutrition at my college, that's an easy win. 
I can use zero hunger um, to talk about uh, my curriculum and to get students to do assignments. Um, and I can tell you in my experience, because I've used these to get students to do writing assignments in a critical thinking course at my college, um, that they really love exploring the sustainable development goals. Students, the idea of, of social justice, helping others in, the, in their communities, in their families related to these goals really resonates strongly with students. And I'm gonna move along. And again, it's just reading through the details of these uh, targets for each one of the goals. Uh, that really resonates with students and gets you to think about how can I create assessments in whatever discipline I am teaching um, where I can talk about that with students. So again, with the sustainable development goals, the United Nations um, typically introduces uh, new initiatives, new projects, um, and new frameworks um, with some from pretty clear language about what, uh, what can and might happen for those. Um, so the focus for these goals is to, um, to support people, right? And that's people first. Um, planet, which is very closely aligned with people. And I won't read these out loud. You can read them for yourselves on the UN site for sure. So there's people, planet, prosperity, and peace. And peace is one of the ones that I actually really love the most because not much else happens in our world without peace. And I know there are so many regions in our world that are em embroiled in conflict um, and where folks have, have never really known peace. Um, and I think the things we're trying to do about economic security, gender equity, um, education for all can't happen unless we have peace. So it's one of my favorite ones actually. And then partnership. And again, this, this emphasis on partnership usually comes at the end of the sentence for the United Nations, but it's almost the most critical piece. Uh, and really what I love about the sustainable development goals is, uh, is the partnership of learners. So using these goals as part of post-secondary education, which is my area of expertise, um, they can also be used by primary schools, secondary schools, um, students of all ages and community members of all ages really seem to love the idea that they can make a contribution to the achievement of the sustainable development goals and they can do it um, one small step at a time one small assignment at a time um, it gets them thinking and reflecting on their families their communities and their nations in really great ways uh, one of the other things that i love about the sdgs uh, is that they are an open framework. So it's the, the solutions for the SDGs are, are meant to be done collaboratively among nations, among researchers, among community scientists, uh, among students who all have the capacity to make some type of contribution. The framework is completely open. The ideas are completely open. There's no copyright United Nations on the sustainable development goals. Um, Anyone who feels they have something to contribute is invited to do so and to benefit from the work of others. So there's so much in the world that's being shared about the SDGs, uh, all kinds of data sets, all kinds of, again, where the targets and indicators come in for various nations. Uh, there's a lot of open government transparency around how they're doing in achieving these goals, which is also super exciting. Uh, one of my other favorite features of these goals is the idea of connection, how, how these goals and the ideas um, and the issues that they bring forward help to connect peer-to-peer um, -peer students, peer-to-peer, -peer, help to connect families, help to connect educators with students and their families. I've learned so much from the students who, who are doing these um, assignments that I assign on the SDGs about their home life, about their family, about their community in which they live, um, and was especially privileged to learn so much more about our indigenous uh, folks here where I live in, uh, in Sudbury. So in terms of connecting the goals, which are an open framework with open educational practices and the use of open educational resources, um, it seems to me, and this is my own thinking about it, um, how do we look at that at local, regional, national, and international levels? 
Um, the first key with the goals is awareness of them. And not everybody has heard of them or heard them described um, in any level of detail. So I love to talk about them and share them with others uh, and just share the UN website, which is uh, such a rich resource in explaining them. The next step that I like to talk about for connection is exploration, personal exploration of the goals. Which one of these goals is interesting to me? Which one would I like to know more about? Which one do I think is really a problem uh, where I live um, or with my family even? Um, research into the goals. So again, this openness in, uh, for example, I can use the directory of open access journals to find more about any one of the goals. Um, there's tons and tons of information, resources, uh, and again, that kind of cross collaborative research approach to open data sets happening around the SDGs. Collaboration. So one of the things I hope to try in this winter semester at my college is uh, connecting a class of um, business students that are in my college with a class of business students uh, in Mumbai. And to, so that those group, two groups of students can talk about the goals and can think through how, how do these goals relate um, to my context? Is my context so different from the context of my peers um, across the ocean? So we're gonna give that a try. Um, the sharing. So today's workshop is about creating and sharing resources. Uh, and again, that all depends on your comfort level with how you want to share things. There's lots of choice in how you might share what you work on today. Uh, but that sharing is, a, is kind of a big value related to the SDGs, related to open. Um, and that sharing empowers others, especially if we create a nice series of assessments today that might benefit other faculty members uh, and other teachers um, across the world. And then the final piece for me with this is advocacy. So how am I, um, once I know about the goals, once I've invested some time in thinking about how they relate to me and to my community and how I think I might be able to contribute to achieving them, uh, how do I advocate for them? So that first piece again is this awareness piece. Um, and again, there's, there's all these great tools and links to share and I've got many of them in my presentation, certainly not an exhaustive list or all of them. The exploration, so exploring the goals, um, it's really best with the goals to go right to the United Nations resources uh, because they're keeping things very up to date uh, and most of the goals will have national reports on how different nations are doing in, in achieving the goals, which is also very interesting reading for students. Um, they can check out their own nations and see how things are going. The SDSN, Sustainable Development Solutions Network, uh, we have a branch here in Canada that is, is more or less a student to student network in post-secondary. Um, so you can check and see if there's SDSN in your country. I believe there's one in Taiwan, which is really exciting. Our, our host country for this conference. Um, and then there's lots of ways to explore uh, for students and for you if you're trying to learn what's going on in my community around these targets. Um, at provincial and state college and university level, lots of research grants happening around the SDGs. And every nation has, um, that's part of the United Nations, has a UNESCO representative uh, and a United Nations representative. So you can find out more about um, what the United Nations reps for your country are doing related to the SDGs. They'll be very familiar with them, which is cool. Uh, in terms of research, I shared a few articles with you from, from the DOAJ, which is one of my favorite sources to search for stuff. Um, you know, you can also take a look at Google Scholar and see what's happening and, and play around with the open articles um, related to the SDGs, but there's a lot going on uh, in terms of research for these, which makes sense. These are global problems, they're wicked problems, right? And that's one of my, I kind of like the wicked problem uh, paradigm because they're, they're pretty much unsolvable until you start to take a look at them in very small ways and have small wins eradicating poverty on planet wide feels a little too big. <laughs> eradicating poverty uh, in, my, in my college to the degree that we can support students with uh, financial supports seems more doable. Um, going back to collaboration on my list of how we, we take a look at the goals and think about them. 
um, lots of, of different examples um, through the SDSN, through this registry of voluntary commitments to life underwater. So life underwater is one of the goals, number 14. Um, and sustainable project ideas to engage students. So um, sustainability is its own discipline uh, and its own practice and has been practiced for, you know, for many, many years. Um, this is sustainability uh, in a more broad sense and definitely encompasses with the SDGs a lot more topics than typical sustainability conversations might. Oops, sorry, I got going, got carried away. Sharing, we talked about uh, in terms of what we're doing today. If you're open to and willing to share the assessments that you create, there's lots of open sharing around the SDGs, especially around targets and indicators and creating solutions. And then advocacy. How can we, how can we um, center the voices? Uh, and centering is one of my new favorite concepts that I learned uh, at a very recent um, panel with Mahabali and friends. Um, I love the idea of centering voices that have, have been traditionally marginalized. How can we center those voices and become good advocates for the achievement of the goals? So that's a lot of me talking now. That's you know almost 20 minutes. Um, I just want to pause and see if there are questions. And again, I, I want you to feel comfortable to unmute and ask your question or to use the chat and ask your question. And I'll take a look and see um, the types of things that have been happening there. Not too much so far, but is there anything more you'd like to know about the goals before we talk about what we're going to do in our workshop today? This is the part where I find out I've been on mute for 20 minutes. <laughs> no, you you've not been on mute. You've been on <laughs> You've been on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I get very, I'm really excited about, <laughs> about the sustainable development goals in you know, a very embarrassing and nerdy kind of way. Um, but I'm imagining that some of you might be as well. All right, well, hearing no questions so far. Um, Oop, there's one. Aha, how do you deal with criticisms of the goals in the classroom? Um, so I, uh, I really love criticisms and I, and I always, so for example, I was teaching a critical thinking course, which requires, almost requires students to criticize what they're learning. And, um, and it's difficult for students to feel invited to criticize, um, which is, which is strange. I don't know if that's true in every country, but certainly in North America and in Canada, um, students feel very reluctant to challenge a professor <laughs> on any topic. Um, so you almost have to kind of encourage and give um, and, and tell both sides of the story, right? These, these, these goals are derived by a small group of people. There's consultation around what the, what's important, um, but it's not the full story. These goals are not, were not designed for everyone by everyone. Um, they were designed by, by people with theoretically with, you know, well educated knowledge, but it doesn't, it doesn't always talk about the reality. So I love it when students, um, especially criticize the goals and say, hey, wait a minute, let's think about this for a moment. Is this the only, the only type of issue that's related to hunger? What about these other issues? Um, and so that invites the student then to do some research because criticism is, is not helpful unless there are some items um, and examples that can be found through research to talk it through and to debate, for example, with classmates. So I love criticism uh, and I invite it. Um, it always makes the conversation much more interesting. All right, let's talk about the workshop bits and I hope that answers your question, uh, Brianna. So there's a couple of, of foci I take, things I like to focus on with the, um, with the SDGs and the open educational practices. I do the killing the disposable assignment math. So David Wiley in 2017 and, and before that and after that and since talks about assignments that we give to students in post-secondary in particular, where they do a ton of work, they do a lot of research, they write their hearts out to create final projects and then both the instructor and the student throw them away. <laughs> we 
get feedback on how it went. Uh, we give feedback, which is time consuming. Um, the student gets the feedback and if they got an A, very often they're like, whew, that was great and moving on to the next. And so what David proposes is that there may be a different way to, come, to go about doing assignments with students. Um, and so when you do the, on the back of the napkin, do the math, I have 5,000 students at Cambrian College. Uh, let's say on average, most of them are full-time, but let's just be generous and say they are taking three courses. And within each course, they could do uh, one assignment. That's 15,000 contributions in one semester at my small college to talking about creating awareness, doing a portfolio piece around the SDGs. That's 15,000 opportunities for students to think about these goals in the context of their studies and their communities and to begin to take small steps to think how they might become contributors. So for me, that's, I love that math. It's so exciting. Uh, if we can find repositories and places where students can, and spaces, social spaces where students can share their work, it's so exciting to think what they could accomplish. Um, we have an amazing um, generation and a couple of generations, a spectrum of uh, very early direct from high school learners in post-secondary to mature students who are changing careers. Um, they're great thinkers. They already have a, no a lot of knowledge. Um, what can we do? And in particular, I think um, the SDGs give us an opportunity, a very clear opportunity to center traditionally marginalized voices. Uh, and then this conversation comes up in my school right now over and over and over again. I don't know if it's just North American, but it might be. Academic integrity. Um, we have so many faculty members who for lots of good reasons and traditional reasons rely on publisher textbooks and multiple choice final exams. Um, thinking through the use of the SDGs gives them opportunities to ask students to make original and unique choices to use their own voices to write and to create um, contributions to solving these problems. So this is a little diagram, of, you know, centering everything that we're talking about on the learner voice, um, and then combining SDGs, open educational practices, OEPs, and OER all together um, in one assignment. I'm super excited about that. So today's workshop work. So the purpose of any good workshop is for, um, for participant voices to be heard uh, and for participants to practice the types of things and explore the types of things um, that we're talking about. And, and the SDGs again are this perfect opportunity, I think, um, to do that together. So for this workshop, I created um, a folder with some materials in it. It's not the biggest folder I've ever created, but it's pretty good size. Uh, and in it, you will find um, a link. So here's a link to the folder I'm gonna put in the chat. Let me make sure that my links are actually working the way I expect. Hopefully I put all the permissions in the way that I would expect. So that is a link to the folder. And in the folder, I'm seeing a little bit different view than you'll see. Um, there's two kind of core things. One is the presentation itself, which has a bunch of links in it that might be helpful to you. Um, the other is this SDG workshop activity sheet. So I'm just gonna confirm, are you able to see this workshop activity sheet? I wasn't sure if, if uh, yes. my, my yep. focus was gonna change. Yep, it's working perfectly. All right, super. So this activity sheet uh, is more or less a walkthrough on what, what I'm hoping we might accomplish in the workshop. Um, the activity is to create or to adapt an assessment or assignment that you've already been using with learners. And again, learners are very broad, educator is very broad. If you teach anything to anyone or would like to, 
<laughs> this workshop is for you. Um, so it's the idea is to create an assignment of some kind, and you can use any tools at your disposal to create and think through what kind of an assessment you would use with the with the sustainable development goals. It's going to require a little bit of time if you're not familiar with the goals to explore them and see what might resonate with you or with the students you're trying to teach. If you teach biology, there's a spectrum of the of the goals that would appeal to you. If you teach chemistry, if you teach marketing, um, you'll see a bunch of different goals that might be useful for an assignment for you. So you'll need some time to explore. Um, and then the idea of the assignment is to create something that the student can write or draw or develop or record. Um, they can make videos, they could use audio, something that might live on past the feedback process and the final grade for the course in, in if it's post-secondary. Um, something that they could use for a portfolio piece. And so the more imaginative, creative, um, unique to the student, uh, giving them as much choice as possible in the assignment that you can kind of think of, those are kinds of helpful ideas in these assessments. So opening the presentation is step one taking a look at the SDGs, thinking through, select one or more for your assignments, whatever you think, again, aligns with the topics and subjects you teach. Um, and in this, you can, uh, once we get rolling here, you can, you can decide to partner with someone or work in a group. Uh, and all you have to do is just let me know in the chat who you'd like to be grouped with, and I can group you together in a breakout room using Zoom. Uh, and you can do some of your work a little bit in private, uh, and play around and have conversations. Uh, and I, you know, I kind of love that way to work. And I'm always happy to, to jump into groups or to talk with you one-on-one -on -one throughout this, this workshop segment uh, about anything that that's, you have questions on. So again, plan the assignment using whatever tools, um, Microsoft, Notes, um, PowerPoints, <laughs> however you wanna think, you, whatever you use for thinking process, writing on a piece of paper, also true. Um, so if you are looking for some inspiration of other projects that have happened, you can take a look at slide 26 in the presentation slides. Um, there's a, several links there that talk about SDG projects that might be helpful. Um, and once you've kind of thought through the assignment details, and assignments are usually like, hmm, the purpose of this assignment is ABC. These are the steps you're gonna have to do in order to turn in your assignment. Uh, and I know I'm a huge fan of assignments that have some sort of grading criteria or rubric that let the student know how they're gonna be graded on the assignment. Uh, and I have some examples uh, that I'll show you very quickly. So once you've kind of done your work and created your assignment, um, I'm going to ask you to try something that may be new to you, which is called a splot. Uh, <laughs> I could not be more fortuitous or lucky to have uh, Alan Levine here with us today because Splot is Alan's baby. Um, and and uh, it's an amazing um, tool that you can use in a WordPress site to create a scenario where someone can input and share content without having to have a sign in or a login or to without having to expose themselves to uh, some of the more commercial sites who take our data and do all kinds of great things with them. So I'm just going to show you, and you may already have, be here, and you might already be working, which is, you know, I know there's always keeners in the groups, which is exciting. So this website, sdgsforlearning.org, and I'm going to put that in our chat as well, although all this stuff is in your assignment sheet and in the presentation. Um, I have built this very minimal WordPress site, so I'm not using it for other blog posts and other things. Uh, but the, key, the core part of the site that's super fun is this SDG assignment creation button. So I'm gonna click on that so you can see what happens. There is an access code for this site. So I want it to be a little bit secure in the kind of work that we're doing today, although it's not super secure. Uh, and I'm gonna put, I put all lowercase OE global and I'm gonna check the code. I'm selecting the check the code button and it's taking me to a creation sheet. And so what happens is once I've kind of done all my side work and I know what my assignment is kind of going to be, I can start to use this creation sheet and fill things in. So if I click on the title, um, 
my assignments. Just know that in this case, uh, and I don't know if it's particular to me and my version of Google, uh, but the background is black, but you can type right in it. So there's my assignment. And if I click on anonymous, I can type in my own name as the author if I want to. And then I'm given a writing area and here's where I can begin to conduct my work. Um, and it has all the user tools that you might expect in most um, uh, word processors, uh, including the option to insert images, to create links, um, to play around with bullet points. So WordPress is typically a very user-friendly environment in terms of, of its likeness to other word processors. I'm gonna click for a moment on my uh, Microsoft Word file. So I created a little assignment called um, Deconstruction Reconstruction. So I'm just copying from my Word doc and pasting into WordPress. And I know Alan is, is probably crying, but. <laughs> With happiness. <laughs> Microsoft Word does all kinds of crazy things to my characters, but I'm gonna pretend that doesn't happen today. Uh, and I'm also just gonna copy some of the text that I've created for my assignment. I'm copying and pasting right into this little section. And, and luckily the links that I created are coming along. So that's nice. Um, and I can, as I say, insert an image and I encourage you to play around with this. So once I've put some things in my writing area about my assignment, and this is not a perfectly finished product, uh, I'm gonna scroll down. I don't wanna add information to the footer. You can, again, you've got lots of choices here, which is great, some credits. Uh, if you're using references and things, you could add them to the footer. Um, you can also choose um, a, a header image. So I had an image that I liked for this assignment. Let's find it in my downloads folder. So I'm just dragging it here and it's probably gonna crop it in fun ways and interesting ways. Um, kind of writing, we do not have so many examples yet of writing, but once we have more examples that have been published, um, this field will fill in and you can decide what kind of writing it is. Tags, if you wanted to add any. My email address, this is a really critical piece. So I'm just gonna put my Gmail address here. When you put your email address into this slot container where you're building your assignment, um, what will happen is once you publish, uh, it will send you an email with a special link so you can come back and edit later. So you wanna hang on to that link. Um, Splot is a little bit like a Padlet in that I don't have to sign in. I can just start doing some stuff. Um, I could add extra information just for editors. I happen to be the editor of this WordPress site, which means all of the, your data that you put on here um, is, is hosted on Reclaim Hosting. I feel that it's a very safe and secure environment. Um, and I get to help you and support you um, with your creations on the site if you would like it. I get to choose the type of license that I would like to have for my creation. I'm typically a fan of CC BY NC. Um, that's the one I use most often, but you have all the choices, including, and I'm just gonna pull down this list. You could make it go straight to the public domain so nobody has to distribute, or you can choose all rights reserved as well. So if you're not comfortable, or if you prefer the no derivatives license, uh, if you're familiar with the Creative Commons licenses, you can choose those. And I'm gonna click on save draft. So I haven't done a ton of work, but I've done a little bit. And let's see what happens. There we go. I've got a save draft and I can preview it. And again, I haven't logged in. <laughs> I haven't had to set up my own blog site to do this. Um, you should be able to do this because Alan has done so much work in the past. And so there is my assignment with the image that I chose um, in a very nice clean format uh, that can be used by others. Um, they can borrow a download, especially if I've put an open license. The licensing information appears on the bottom. Uh, the links work. And that's really all there is to using this splot, which is really super exciting to me. I know how difficult it is to make and publish open educational resources. Um, so I want to invite you to use a space that makes that as easy as it can be. Uh, and you're likely to have questions as we go along using this tool. 
uh, but hopefully it's easy as it can be. And then if I click on the published portion of the website, oh, I may not have hit the publish button, sorry. <laughs> nice demo, Jenny. So what I'm gonna have to do, if you bear with me a moment, um, what's really great is that I received an email with a link to edit my post <laughs> because I put my email address in there. So I'm gonna click on my, e my email. I'm gonna go back in with OE Global Code. Sorry, you probably can't see this because I'm. it put me into my other browser. My default browser is Safari, which no one loves except me. <laughs> I'm going to copy my link, put it into Chrome. In my access code again, all lowercase. It's a little tricky because it tries to auto help me. And there, here I am back in my assignment. Phew, that I'd done all works. that work and I thought <laughs> I lost it. But luckily, I put my email address in. Um, so, what I want to do is update and publish this. Now that I've taken a look at it in preview, I'm happy with my work, giving it a thumbs up. If I choose update and publish, um, it gives me some information. I can view it now. Uh, I can come back to it later, save that link for up uh, for editing. Now, if I clicked on published, I had done one earlier just to test out the splot, which is it's working beautifully um, in, a, in a way that from a technological point of view, I will never understand, but Alan understands very deeply. Um, and so it saves all the work that you do will just start to pile up here. If you choose to publish it, um, what we will get is a is a really lovely collection of your ideas. Um, so I'm really excited about that. So I'm leaving about an hour or so of work time for the workshop for you to begin to think about assignments. And they don't have to be huge assignments. They can just be um, even at the level of, uh, here's a description of the sustainable development goal related to um, infrastructure. So if I'm running a course on, on building or engineering, here's the sustainable development goal. Can you reflect on this and tell me how this goal might impact the way that you work? So that's a very simple example, uh, but one that I could use if I were teaching an engineering course, just to introduce the SDGs to my students, get them to do a discussion forum post, which is very, you know, it's sort of this very smallest possible assignment, a spa, <laughs> if you will, um, to get your students starting to think about, learn about and think about the goals. So uh, it was a lot of information. Um, and hopefully this website is based on my materials, easy to get to, easy to find and easy to use as you do your work around assignments. Um, again, I want you, if you would like to work in a group with someone else, um, if you can just want to buddy up, I can put you into a breakout room or you can work independently and, and all of you may choose to do some independent work um, before. But what's going to happen during this next sort of hour work hour is that I will stay in the main room and uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for now so that I can see your faces and if you have questions or want to, again, um, be grouped into rooms. I definitely want to make sure that happens. Um, but I'm here for questions um, and to support the ways that you're thinking about your assignments. So if you want to have a quick conversation, we can, we can do that together. Um, you can go off independently. I know that it's two hours of time in anyone's schedule right now, even while we're in a conference, is a lot of time. Uh, you may have other things you want to do to come back to um, creating your assignments. Thank you, Jenny. I'm going to um, stop the recording at this point. Okay, that's great. Okay. Yeah, that's super great. Thanks, Alan.